regardless of what conditions were placed on us or our interpretation or our beliefs around whatever conditions were placed on us as children, what are the conditions that I'm placing on myself? Because now as a grown up, I know that I can't change other people's conditions. What are my conditions? What have I taken in and taken on that were perhaps other people's conditions that I've now unconsciously adopted as my own, right? We think about so many of these thoughts that we have about ourselves. I'm not good enough. I don't have what it takes. I need to be like this in order to be worthy, right? And we just like kind of taking a step back and asking ourselves, and I talk about this in my book about, you know, here's your room, right? Your brain is this room. And how often do we stop and look around in the room and be like, oh, this is what the curtains look like. This is what the lamp looks like. These curtains are maybe a little paisley. It's a shag carpet, maybe a floral couch. But like, I didn't decorate this. (laughs) Someone else came in and decorated it. And actually, I'm not really down with this style. I really like this. I don't really like, but okay, so someone else came in and put this lamp there And they chose this carpet, but it's not how I want my space to be decorated. So how about I just either send those items back to their original owner, donate them to Goodwill. Some of them might need to go in the dumpster, but now I am going to bring in the pieces that I like, that fit with me, that work for me, that I'm comfortable with. And thinking about that with our own thoughts, so we get these thoughts that we have, like, I'm not good enough, or this is what I need to do to be loved, or if I'm like this, then it means that I'm not worthy, or whatever that is, whatever those thoughts are. Whose thoughts are they? And where did I pick them up? And how did I kind of unconsciously adopt them as, as my own? Right? I let someone come in. It's almost like I let someone come in and decorate my space, and it never occurred to me that I was allowed to get rid of those items and redecorate in a style that I like. So it's really choosing, what do I want to think about me? What do I want to believe about me? How do I want to understand myself, others, life in the world? And bring those in and intentionally choose what I want. So instead of, you know, I'm a big advocate of instead instead of trying to stop something, our brains work a lot better when we start something, right? Instead of stop thinking those thoughts or stop having those beliefs, don't worry about so much about that. Instead, ask ask yourself, what do I want to think? What do I want to start? What do I want to be calling in? What do I want to be practicing? What do I want to be knowing and believing about myself. So it's that intentional choosing. Yep. I love it because I'm all about, like my my content is about like intentionally designing your life and creating your dream life. And then this is the deeper level of intentionally designing your thoughts and your beliefs. And that's where everything starts is, do I even want to think like that? Do I even want to you know, like how it's amazing how much you can design intentionally. Isn't it? Isn't it amazing? Like we don't, it doesn't even occur it's to crazy. us. There's so much work to do. Right? <laughs> There's so much extra. You're saying at the beginning, what is like one thing that people don't know that you want them to know? And essentially it's, yeah. it's that. The power that you have to, to declutter your mind, to redesign everything. To it's choose, all, right? Yeah, to exactly. choose what do everything I want to think place. about me and what thoughts are really just not serving me Mm -hmm. that I have unintentionally or maybe unconsciously continued to believe and abide by, right? And I mean, it is deeper work and it's not something that happens in a moment, but it is something that we can start to get curious about, Mm -hmm. right? And just really asking ourselves, is this thought serving me? Is this repeated action serving me? Is this the outcome that I want? And if I do not have the outcomes that I want, then let's reverse engineer it. Now, I'm not naive in thinking that like, you know, like everything in your life is your choice. Absolutely, that is not true in this kind of simplistic form. Sometimes we find ourselves in circumstances that 
it's just part of life, right? We're in a difficult circumstance, something going on that is n- not necessarily within our control. And that is true. And although we don't always have control over our circumstances, we always have choices within them. And it you know, brings me back to the last line in my book was from Viktor Frankl, who was a concentration camp survivor. And not a direct quote, but basically he says, everything can be taken from a person except for his ability to choose his own mind and thereby his own way. That's beautiful. And really understanding that our internal world is not something that people can take from us unless we continue to let them. And it's not easy. We don't live on islands. We are impacted by other people. But it's really becoming more conscious of when someone gives something to me, right? So many of us are used to just accepting it. Someone has an opinion, someone has a thought, someone has a two cents to add, someone has their, you know, seemingly superior wisdom to impart on us. And we, so often we just sort of blindly accept it, especially those of us who have been socialized as women. We could go into the whole history around that. But, you know, like we have been socialized and a lot of us have the belief that we just have to accept what comes at us instead of being like, okay, they're sending me something and I can stand at the door and look at it and decide whether or not I want to receive it or put a little return to sender Mm -hmm. and give it right Right. back and be like, I'm going to leave that with you Mm -hmm. because that's not mine. And not only is it not mine, me receiving it is not going to be helpful to me. Mm -hmm. Not to say that any kind of, you know, feedback and be like, man, that's your opinion. I don't care what you think. Sometimes other people's opinions, other people's feedback are going to be helpful for our own um, development, for our own growth and, you know, to like be able to sometimes see things that we might not be seeing. But we get to decide that we don't blindly have to accept everything, that we're allowed to contemplate and consider whether or not this is going to be helpful for me. And if it's not, black ink, return to sender. Here you go. (laughs) (laughs) It's so important to note that we have that power because I think naturally a lot of us just automatically intake everything and then we, other people's thoughts or opinions become our own and we don't even know where we stand. And I think the tough question, and I'm, I'm someone who suffers from this too, is like, you don't know what you want, where your, where your choice ends and like someone else's opinion begins, you know? So how, I guess, what advice do you have for people who struggle with knowing where that boundary is and how to, you know what I mean? Find that sense of self. Yeah. And I think really just giving ourselves a little more space in our modern culture, we don't have a lot of time for space. (laughs) you know, or one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. A lot of that can be um, an expression of anxiety that we fear sitting in silence because we don't really want to sit with our brains that aren't so nice to us when they have, you know, are, are left to their own devices, you know, or we just have this idea that being productive and always being effective and efficient is what I need to be doing as a human. And if I'm ever not doing that, then I'm wasting time, right? Or I feel guilty when I take just time and space to just like, exist in my humanity, but really giving ourselves just a little bit more space, a little bit more time for space and listening to those whispers. And so much wisdom comes when we stop trying to always do the right thing or feel the right thing or be the right person. Instead of just taking a little bit of time and space to be like, okay, where am I at right now? And if I just pay attention to listen, what makes the most sense for me right now? Not saying that it's all about what I necessarily want in this moment, because sometimes the things that we want in this moment aren't going to be the things that are in our best interest. But having a little bit of conversation with ourselves and being like, again, asking ourselves, what is the outcome that I want? And this is why it's so important for us as humans to be like, I don't know which direction to go if I don't have, you know, somewhere that I'm going towards, right? 
But if you have some like goals, if you have some things that are important to you, if you have some values that are helping direct your decisions, if you have some of that clarity, then it's going to make it a lot easier to listen to yourself and be like, okay, this is the outcome that I want. This is the goal that I have. This is what's important to me. This is what I'm working towards. What decisions are going to lead me towards that on my journey? Does that answer your question? Yeah, definitely. To to sit in your own space and to to ask those questions as a, it's really creating your own bubble where you can think about these yeah. things deeply and feel it and feel the directions. Yeah, and also you're allowed to have sort of a, a, a direction that you're going and you're allowed to recalibrate and redirect on your way. You're allowed to have more different information or a different experience or a new idea and then recalibrate. But it is really important. Like if we want to know kind of which direction to go, then we have to be having some kind of goal or destination in mind. But if we're just sort of sitting there kind of flailing through life, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's happening, right? Then it's going to be really hard. We're going to, we're not going to be able to trust our own wisdom because we're like, I don't know what this wisdom is about. (laughs) And I mean, it doesn't mean that you have to have everything clearly figured out. And I remember I spent a lot of time in my twenties flailing. I just felt like I was flailing. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my career, but I just was in this point where I'm like, I'm just going to keep showing up and I'm just going to keep trying things and trust that in this process, it's going to become more clear. Mm 